the Polgar Chess University. In this lesson, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the basic opening principles. First of all, one of the most important things in the beginning part of the game is the center of the chessboard, that is, these four squares that right now are marked with green. Ideally, you'd want to start the game by moving at least one of your center pawns to d4 or e4 squares. That is, either this pawn or the e pawn moving to e4. Number two, typically you would want to develop your knights before you develop your bishops. The knights are typically best positioned on f3 or c3. On the other hand, the bishop's position is more dependent on the opponent's moves and plans. Number three, castle quickly. Why do we castle? To put our king in a safer place. Also, to activate our rooks along the E or D center files. Number four, do not bring your queen out early. Why? Because as your opponent develops his pieces, your queen may get chased around. Number five, do not push your side pawns for no reason. And finally, do not move the same piece twice before you moved every other piece, and here I'm talking about bishops and knights, once. Of course, an exception to that may be if one of your pieces is under attack or if you have an opportunity to capture one of your opponent's pieces for free. Well, let's get started with some examples. Okay, in our first example, white breaks several of the rules. Right here on the second move, white breaks rule number four, that is not bringing the queen out early. This is a premature attack. At the moment, white attacks the pawn on e5, but black, of course, can easily defend that. And now, white is trying to give the fool's mate to cooperate the bishop and the queen, and next move, capture, queen takes pawn, checkmate. Make sure you don't fall for this, and the best way to react to this attack is by pushing the g-pawn up, attacking the queen. See, that's what I'm talking about when I said the queen may get chased around. Now again, white is consistent, trying to checkmate again on that same f7 square. But black just continues developing and interposes the knight in between the queen and that pawn on f7. Of course, it's important to see that your queen is guarding your knight. And now, white played queen to b3. With this move, violating two rules. The one, not to move the queen early, and the second, not to move the same piece again and again. And here, what white is trying to do is to back up the bishop and capture that pawn on f7. Of course, black would simply protect the pawn with the queen, it should be an okay move, but actually here black can do better than that. And namely, attack the queen again. But you may say, didn't you just say not to move the same piece twice? Yes, I did say that. However, when your opponent violates rule after rule, that can create a situation that you can make an exception in order to take advantage of your opponent's mistake. Now, it would be a mistake for white to try to grab the pawn on f7, because after king e7, 
White will have difficulty on hanging on to that bishop on f7. While the queen can still do it for one more move, after the queen is being attacked another time, now the queen will need to leave the protection of the bishop and after, for example, queen check, black could capture the bishop if he wants to. Okay, let's go back to the position when black attacked the white queen with the knight. And let's see what happens if, for example, the queen moves to c3. Now black has several good ways to continue, but let's see what happened in this game. Black played d5 attacking the white bishop. And white captured the pawn and black developed another bishop attacking the pawn on c2. However, that is a lot more than just an attack on the pawn because black now threatens to capture the pawn with the knight and that would create an attack on the rook and the king at the same time which is a fork. White played d3, blocking the bishop's attack on the pawn. But this is actually a mistake, because now black has a little combination to win the white queen. And that elegant move is to play bishop b4, attacking the white queen and pinning it. But what happens if the queen goes and captures the bishop? Well, then comes the family fork. By knight captures pawn, Chuck not only attacks the king, but the white queen and rook as well. And now, after the king moves out of the check, knight captures queen, and black, of course, has a winning advantage. Let's move on to our next example and discuss a little bit about king's safety. Here we go. In this position, both sides so far have developed in a very natural way. What should be black's next move? Should they develop the knight or the bishop or something else? It's quite crucial to remember that in the beginning of the game, you should try to put your king in safety, just as white did in this position already, by castling. So the correct move here for black is to castle. Make sure to avoid any unpleasant check that may happen, for example, if black would develop his knight. After that, white would be giving a check and causing a commotion in black's position. Now, for example, if the king moves out of the check, that would mean that black lost the right to castle for the rest of this game. And that would be a significant disadvantage for two reasons. The king would be in a more dangerous position. And second of all, the rook would be in the corner out of play. Of course, moving the king to d7 is even a whole lot worse because an immediate checkmate would come. See what can happen when a king gets stuck in the middle and doesn't get castled? Checkmate at such an early stage of the game. A bit better is to block the check with the knight, but white would also get a nice initiative after developing the bishop, and if black would castle now, then white would trade the bishop for the knight, creating black double pawns as well as weaknesses along the G file in front of the king. And white may develop an attack going soon with the queen to attack towards H6. Let's go back to our starting position. So therefore, the best move is to castle and 
prevent White giving a check with his rook on e1 to our king. Remember, castle as soon as you can. Let's move on to our next example. We start in a typical way. This is called the Petrov defense. And white can capture the pawn. And this is a tricky situation when it's not recommendable for black to capture the pawn right away because white can play queen e2, attacking the knight. And now the knight cannot retreat because that would allow a discovered check from the queen while at the same time the knight attacks the queen and black cannot avoid losing his queen. A better move for black here would be to play d6, attacking white's knight, and only after the white knight moves away from the attack, then to capture the knight. Now, after pawn attacks the knight, the knight should retreat to a safe square. And what should we do if white happens to give a check? First of all, remember, don't worry about a check. A check in itself doesn't necessarily cause you danger. However, remember, don't immediately touch your king and look where you can go. Because more often than not, especially in the beginning part of the game, you may have better options such as blocking a check rather than moving your king. For example, here it would be really silly to move the king and give up on the right to castle in this game. The natural and best move would be to block the check with the bishop, continue developing, preparing to castle, and then, for example, after bishop g5, castle, and if bishop takes, of course, you would not want to take with your pawn and double up your pawns, but take with the bishop and have an excellent position for black. Here is another typical situation that happens in numerous games. White starts e4, e5, develops the knight attacking the pawn, and black protects it with his knight. White develops the bishop, so does black. White castles, and black develops his knight. Attacking the pawn on e4, white just protected it with his last move, and black castles. And now some players like to start a premature attack by playing knight g5. Remember, this is not a good idea. And if your opponent does it to you, meaning you're playing with the black pieces, you can simply attack that knight and invite the knight to capture the pawn. Because this exchange, the knight and bishop, that white gave up for the rook and pawn favors black. Even though the material is same, 3 plus 3, that is bishop plus knight equaling 6, compared to rook plus pawn also equaling 6, the reason why it favors black is that white wasted a lot of time accomplishing this. White moved the bishop twice and white moved the knight three times. That's a total of five moves just to achieve a trade. Therefore, don't worry about such a premature attack. The next example deals with something very common mistake at beginner level. In a situation like this, giving a check does not accomplish anything. In fact, it's a mistake if it's answered correctly. The correct answer is blocking the check with a pawn because that forces that bishop to move again. In the meantime, white has strengthened the center, the d4 square, and white is doing very well. So therefore, if you have such a situation, you see a check, and if that check can be blocked with a pawn move on c3, don't give a check. If you're on the other side and your opponent gives that check, put your pawn in between the king and the bishop and you'll be doing fine. In the next example, 
we'll deal with another typical situation. After e4, e5, knight f3, why shouldn't you defend the pawn with your bishop? The reason is that you don't want to block the pawn behind the bishop because you would want to move that pawn from d7 in order for your other bishop that runs on the light squares that it can get out. So therefore, typically, it's not a good idea to put your bishop in front of your d pawn. And now let's move on to a different subject, and that is how to defend ideally against checkmates. Here we go. The first task is to recognize what does white want to do. If you're playing with the black pieces, every time you should ask yourself, what does my opponent want to do? And here you see the queen and the knight being right in front of your king. They obviously trying to do something. And specifically, white is trying to capture with the queen the pawn on b7 and give checkmate. What is the most ideal defense here? Well, it is to move the queen to b6. As you can see, black is ahead in material. Black has a rook versus knight. That means black is up an exchange. Therefore, to trade pieces, to trade queens, it's to black's advantage. And let's see the following position. Here we go. Now it's white's turn, so therefore white needs to figure out what is black trying to do. Hopefully you can figure this one out. Well, black is trying to checkmate white by queen capturing the pawn on h2 because the bishop is protecting the queen when that would happen. What should white do about this? Should white push the pawn up to h3? Not really. That wouldn't help because the queen could still step behind the pawn and give checkmate. Should white push this pawn and attack the queen? It's a possibility, but it would weaken the pawn on e3. Any pawn that is in an open file that can be targeted by the enemy rooks that can no longer be defended by a pawn could be considered a weakness. As we know, pawns don't move backwards. Therefore, be very careful with your pawn moves. The most ideal move here for white is to play knight to f3. Not only that the knight protects now the h2 square, so if the queen would capture there, the knight would capture the queen, but also at the same time the knight is attacking the queen. And therefore this is a multi-purpose move and typically that's a good thing when you defend and attack at the same time. You may wonder at times which side should you castle to? And let's look at this position. It's white to move, and white has the option to castle on either side of the board. But which one should you choose? Why is that in most games, at least one or both players choose to castle rather on the king side? Well, for one reason, it's because it's the faster thing to do. Remember, from the king's initial position towards the king's side, white needs to clear only pieces from two squares, while on the other side, on the queen's side, there are three pieces that would need to be removed in order to castle. But in this position, white is ready for either one. Why is that white should prefer to castle on the king's side in this case as well? The reason is that if white would castle to the queen's side, 
it could potentially be in quite a bit of danger along the open B file. Generally, you do not want to castle onto the side that already has open files on the A, B, or in this case, C files. Now, Black could play the rook to B8, and then, together with other pieces, could create an attack on the queen side. Let's see the next position, when again, Black has a choice to castle to either side. And so does white. So which side should white or black castle to in such a position? What's important about this situation is that the G file is open from white's perspective. In such situation, neither side would like to castle to the king side. White would not want to castle to the king side because the king would not have the safety it should seek. Black would get attacking chances getting close to the king because white no longer has a pawn to guard the king on g2. It would be much better for white to rather castle to the other side, to the queen side, where white has all three pawns in front of the king safe and sound. At the same time, black should also avoid castling to the king's side because white would get an opportunity to bring the rook quickly to the g file and start attacking maybe by doubling up the rooks. For example, if now black would play let's say rook e8, white could go and double the rooks, that means putting the two rooks on the same file, let's say black plays a6, and white would play rook h to g1, creating an immediate attack on that g7 pawn. So therefore, after white castles, for example, to the queen side, the best black can do, black should also castle to the queen side and avoid so-called castling into the attack. That's what we would call. Now, if white would still put the rook on the G file, which is an okay thing to do, black would safely just move his pawn up with his king being safe on the other side of the board. Remember, the purpose of castling is not castling. The purpose of castling is to put your king to safety. So if castling to a certain side of the board is not safe, you may want to consider castling to the other side. Or yet, in exceptional cases, you may even want rather to keep your king in the middle of the board rather than to castling onto an open file where your opponent's rooks can right away attack it. And let's see our final position in this lesson. In this little game that we are seeing right now, white starts with e4 and black continues with d6. And again, a similar example like we already saw from the other side. What if white gives a check with the bishop? Is that a good idea? No. Even though the king cannot move right now, it's not a checkmate, because black can block this check in numerous ways. And which is the best way to block it? With the bishop, the knight, the queen, or the pawn? Well, definitely not the queen, because you certainly wouldn't want to lose a queen for a bishop. Blocking with the bishop or the knight, on d7 with the bishop, or the knight, or on c6 with the knight, are all reasonable choices. However, my top choice definitely would be blocking this check with a pawn. With that move, you don't only block the check, but at the same time create an immediate counterattack. I see this type of mistake over and over and over for inexperienced players. Learn from the lesson and don't make that mistake.
And if your opponent does it, make sure you know you want to block with your pawn. Thank you for listening and make sure you'll be back next week with some more tips to learn from. Thank you. Bye-bye.